Every piece of content in capacities is an object and every object has a type. Whilst we give you some types to start off with, there will definitely be a point where you decide that you would like your own object type. So I will show you in this video how you set one up. To do so, you want to go to the left hand sidebar and click the new type button. When you do this, you'll have a choice to make. You can either start with a template or start completely from scratch. With either of these options, you are able to edit the same amount of settings. It's just at what level in the process do you begin? If your use case is met by one of these templates, start with one of those and adapt later. If not, click create your own. Now the first thing to look at is the naming convention. You need a singular noun and a plural version as well and if you would like you can change the icon and the colour as well. So I'm going to use the example of definition and definitions. There's always words to learn and we can write them down and I'm going to find a book icon which is there and just give it a nice colour as well and then click create content type. Content type and object type are synonyms. You'll probably see both of them appear in the app. Then when you click create you are taken straight to your new object type and it always gives you an example so you can see what it looks like now because all we have done so far is to find that each new object will be called a definition all of which are part of the definitions object type that's all we can see however if you would like to add more properties um, you can actually do so from the page itself or you can Go to these three dots in the top right of your page or the three dots in the left hand sidebar and navigate to where it says open object settings. This will tell you precisely what you can customize for your whole object type. So um, if I were to add a property, I would just click add property and choose which version I would like. So let's say I add an icon. I can now go back into my definition, hover over it and click add icon and the ability to add an icon will be present in every single page. Similarly, if I add a text property, it will be, you know, anything you do will update every single instance of this object type. Now, um, these properties are largely self-explanatory. Some of them down here are um, like more visual ones. You've got dates, time, checkboxes, and then you have text, which is useful just for writing plain text. And you can also actually link to things as well using the same linking conventions we discussed in other videos. You can also link URLs and they'll be properly formatted. So the text property is a super flexible property to have. And then the select properties let you link between different object types. So if you delete one, it will be deleted across all of your objects. The one that we really recommend you don't delete unless you're absolutely sure is blocks. Blocks are what you write in, it's where all of your content is. And even though there is a warning for deletion, if you delete it, you are literally deleting all of the like the word content within your object type. So just be sure you want to do that before you actually press delete. It's not just properties and names that you can customize, though. You can also define templates, which we'll do a separate video on. Customize the layout of the page like the default. So um, the normal page sort of is centered like this. Or you can default it so that it's always on a wide page. And then if you are on the Believer plan currently, that might change, you can choose the layout of the page. For definitions, I would always choose an index card because I think the smaller format works really well. And this just lets you, you know, really customize how your object type holds the information it is designed to hold. And then finally, the last thing you can customize is your card view. The card view is what you see in your object type in the wall or the gallery. And it's also what you see when you um, have a small card link view as well. You can choose which properties you want to show. So let's say that I didn't want to show the content preview. It would shrink that card and I wouldn't need to see it. So that's really it for creating an object type. You want to click the new button, you want to name it, and then you just want to update the settings to be whatever you would like them to be, bearing in mind that whatever changes you make will be applied to every other instance of that object type, but it does allow you that kind of um, flexible customization for the information that lives within the studio, if you mind. If you have any questions about this, let us know.